So uh, let's talk about bones and inflammatory conditions around the shoulder now. So let's see. Uh, Dan, let's start with this one. Uh, we got a newborn uh, as a frontal chest X-ray. Uh, it looks like there are like you know expansive and lucent lesions of the uh, bilateral humerus. Um, I mean, right, uh, and also, I can't really see it, cl I mean, there are, clavicles are also there, yeah, <laughs> osteogenesis and perfect type 2. So those are, I guess, fractured, yeah. That's just a lot of deformed bones. With, uh, with, uh, you, can, you can see the cortical margins are well designed here. We've got a lot of uh, a decreased density and, th and uh, deformity and thickening of the of the bones of the shoulder bilaterally. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about trauma, the bones, and then the AC joint. So, uh, uh, Jashali, what do you think of this case? 48-year-old male with acute shoulder pain while lifting his arms in celebration after a soccer victory. <laughs> so, we have uh, axial PD fat satin coronal T1 weighted images. And uh, the subscapular uh, muscle is discontinuous, and there's a large fluid gap uh, where it should be. So here's the subscap muscle, and there's the tendon. Okay, so there's this fluid collection that's uh, pushing the tendon away. Um, this is the subscapular person. Okay. And. Okay, so then there's this low signal intensity curvilinear structure, uh, loose body floating in the bursal fluid. Uh, and so that's actually a fragment of cartilage, uh, or well, it could be cartilage or a piece of bone that's come off of the humeral head. This turned out to be, uh, this is cartilage, and it was uh, a chondral injury and a displaced chondral fragment uh, by throwing his arms up in the air. So uh, <coughs> we just talked about you have to look for loose bodies, and in some situations, these loose bodies can actually be focal chondral uh, uh, fragments like this. And it's obviously important to, to document where everything is and the size of everything. Okay. Uh, Jonah, what do you think of this case? Okay, all righty. So we've got a 16-year-old um, male with uh, right shoulder pain for three months after uh, hockey injuries. Normal part of the game, really, I guess. But um, yeah, so the uh, chromioclavicular joint. So we're seeing some sort of uh, irregularity, um, and uh, yeah, just sort of a, yeah, uh, all that stuff. Okay. So we're seeing a lot of uh, edema in that area too now. On the MR, especially the yeah, sensitive image there, um, and yeah, okay, so more edema still. So anything else is happening? Okay, okay now, so um, the, compared to the other side, so we're now we're two months later. Okay, so we're seeing um, sort of what appears to be like osseous loss on this. We're seeing more distinct margins, but still sort of some fraying there and. Uh, compared to the uh, normal side, uh, which looks pretty good. Uh, so, you know, this kind of thing can happen uh, if he's uh, had trauma three months ago. This could be post-traumatic osteolysis, something like that, or, okay. This is, this is called post-traumatic osteolysis, and it's actually really a, a, a traumatic injury to the, the subchondral bone here, uh, the, the distal aspect of the, of the clavicle. So it's really a traumatic injury. And... But, but the term is often called post-traumatic osteolysis. Okay. Uh, Jeff, what do you think of this case? A uh, 51-year-old male, one week after a bike accident, pain evaluates into the right arm. And uh, looks like we have axial, uh, I think, uh, let's stir on the right, I think, and what, uh, T, what, mm, P fat side on the left, I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, it right. looks like it's... Yeah, uh, so we're inverted here, I think. So essentially, we're seeing at the uh, manubrium, uh, the, it's actually the, uh, 
follicular proximal clavicle articulation with the manubrium. Uh, we see that there's a fluid extending into the joint, and uh, it appears to be uh, displaced, uh, mildly displaced or angulated. Uh, so this is uh, certainly uh, concerning for a, um, uh, you know, basically like a partial uh, dislocation of the, uh, you know, the sternoclavicular joint. Uh, and on this, uh, you know, coronal image of the left shoulder, we can see the left clavicle that there is certainly edema, marrow edema uh, there, although the cortex itself appears to be intact. Uh, so and, uh, yeah, well, we'll actually, I'm looking, yeah, yeah, actually, I'm looking at the, yeah, so uh, looking there, and again, it's, 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 we're seeing signal, uh, increased signal intensity within the joint, yeah, uh, suggesting it's, it's like a partial dislocation. Yeah, it's the first rib maneuver, uh, articulation. Oh, the first rib, pardon me. Yeah. No, well, that's, yeah. well, the axial image is, uh, it's, it's hard to say, but here, uh, oh. and it normally, most commonly would be the clavicle uh, involved in this, uh, which we can see, this. that's the first rib sternal injury. Uh, I, I don't blame you for saying this is the clavicle here, because most of the time when you get an injury like this, it is going to be the, the clavicle. Uh, <clears throat> now, the, there are a couple of things to be concerned about here. Uh, in this particular case, you can see that the deep capsule is intact. That's extremely important, because uh, uh, if you have the, the biggest risk on these injuries uh, uh, is if you have the first rib or the clavicle, uh, which are impacted posteriorly into the great vessels, and that can be a life-threatening uh, problem. And if you if you see that, if you have surgery, you, you really have to have thoracic surgery uh, available to be helpful. So, so that's very important. Uh, if you not to have a posterior displacement, those are very rare. The vast majority of these injuries, you ha you'll have an anterior displacement, which can be painful. Uh, but less likely to be life-threatening. In this particular case, this is going to be a relatively stable injury because that posterior thick capsule is still intact, and that's generally the case for most of these. And here we have an, uh, 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 just a tear of the anterior capsule, and you can see uh, some separation there at, at the joint space. Uh, John, what do you think about these? Um, well, this certainly doesn't need any treatment other, other than a sling. Uh, but as far as um, uh, not seeing too many of these and with a posterior displacement, the reason you don't see them, the patients are deceased. Okay. Yeah. Right. Can I ask you a question? Um, on the axial images, there's a little bit of edema between the posterior, or I, yeah, between the posterior capsule and the uh, internal ma uh, mammary. So. So do we say that that's hematoma there, um, and that they you should still get a CT with contrast to make sure that there's not a vessel injury at that location, or uh, they're clinically stable? Okay. Uh, how about a fracture? Uh, of the bones, you mean? Uh, in a situation like this, where that posterior capsule is intact, it, it, unless you see really a mass-like situation, I would I would not be concerned about getting a CT angiogram. But you don't call it hematoma; you just say. Yeah, this is just a little bit of edema that I think is post-traumatic, and it's not focal, and it's not producing any mass effect. And with the intact posterior capsule, I'm uh, less concerned that we would have a significant uh, vascular injury in this location. Can you bring back the X-ray, John? Oops. I don't think we had an X-ray, John. Let me see. Oh, okay. But it does. I I, I agree with. Um, uh, uh huh. With what was said there, uh, there there is a theme around that rib, pro uh, approximately, or uh, no, I'm sorry, not uh, yeah, approximately. Um, it sure looks like there's some kind of an injury to the rib. Yeah. First rib. Yeah, well, we don't have those images here. Obviously, the rest of the the images would show the rib. I don't remember them being a fracture elsewhere in the rib, but uh, certainly something to be concerned about. And this. Yeah, if, you, if you look laterally, 
uh, you, uh, you see a fluid around the, uh, the yeah. rib. Right. No, I agree. Uh, I don't remember that the details of the case here, but I believe that the only injury here was at the at the joint space. Anyway, De Sally was uh, uh, very astute on picking that up. Yes, that's right. Let's see, Jeff, is it your turn, or did you do the last one? What? Uh, I just did the, Okay. I just did the last one. Got a 34-year-old male with three weeks uh, history from his uh, soccer injury. Um, we have a chrono, looks like a, I'm not sure, it's a T1 fat set or a PD fat set and a fluid sensitive image on the right. Uh, again, we see T, T, T1 left and then a PD fat set on the right. And it looks like, um, again, we have, if that's a first rib, if that's a clavicle below that, there's like a fracture through the, that's a clavicle, or it could be also involving the clavicle too, is a first serve clavicle. It looks like actually both of them are involved with the fracture line, uh, minimally displacing or non-displacement from the sternum. Yeah, this is part of the joint space here, right? Yeah, so there's a little separation. Edema of, yeah, menubrum, yeah. So on the axial image again, we see like more fluid on that patient's right uh, at the, um, clavicle or rib uh, sternal articulation with uh, posteriorly there is like more focal um, edema or actually like it looks like maybe hematoma so that that kind of is worries about like you know posterior capsule being violated and then you have to worry about the greater vessels uh, behind too. So this, this was a more severe injury than the previous one. Here both the sternal manubrial and the first rib manubrial joint spaces were disrupted. Here we have really kind of a disruption of that posterior capsule and a hematoma forming posteriorly here. The flow in the vessels looks normal, uh, certainly on, on the MR scan here. And we can see we have a bone edema here. Yes, John? I, I, I think that there's edema anterior too. Yes, yeah, so there's edema anterior as well. That's right. So uh, this again was treated conservatively and they did not operate on this. Uh, but this is a more severe example, and this is one that I was certainly more concerned about, a mediastinal type injury in this case, but it was treated conservatively and the patient did well. Okay. If any of these are placed, that's always conservative treatment. Okay, 46 year old male with sternocovicular pain six months after trauma, so you have multiple Full coronal images, uh, T1, T2, and PD fat sat. And uh, there's a, a sub, there's a erosion and irregularity along the inferior aspect of the left clavicle with some bone marrow edema um, within it and adjacent fluid uh, between the sternomanubrial articulation. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, prominent soft tissue hypertrophy surrounding that, uh, which looks irregular. Um, and it's extending into the anterior mediastinum, but not uh, beyond the level of the mediastinum fat. Um, okay. Could this also be an infection? Uh, uh, the patient really didn't have any clinical signs of infection, just had pain uh, uh, in this location. And it, it had just been kind of gradual, increasing pain. Uh, but this is one of the complications you can see after we knew, when you have a... Uh, an unstable uh, injury in this location. You continue to have instability. You get uh, persistent bony injury, hypertrophic changes, and then you can get secondary mass effect uh, from all the callus uh, which develops in this location. John? I was going to say six months of uh, infection, which you, you would assume it would be bacterial, uh, that, that, that would have been taken care of a lot earlier. I, w I would think if it's in America. But. Yeah, and uh, and th this this patient really didn't have any symptoms as to suggest an uh, infection. This is just chronic <clears throat> instability uh, from from the injury to the to the joint space there. Uh, 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 fixing these are not easy, but but uh, you wire these together. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jonah. 
Okay. okay. So we've got a 22-year-old uh, medical student complaining of uh, left anterior neck pain, a uh, history of uh, eczema. Um, okay, so here's a radiograph. And let's see here. Oh, um, okay. So, yeah, I guess I'm seeing um, some irregularity of the uh, left clavicle there, approximately. Yeah, sort of that subtle lucency there. I mean, so, so, so the cortical, the cortical margin is very indistinct, and you also mm -hmm. have sclerosis here of the uh, proximal centimeter and a half of the. Gravically, you can see it again down here. The indistinctness of the cortical mar of the cortical margin. You can see it nicely on the right side, and then you have all this sclerotic change here uh, within the bone. Yeah. So, what do you think is going on here? Okay. Oh, and uh, here's her uh, MR. So, um, it's okay. Well, fortunately, uh, the findings are pointed out for me. Uh, we've got soft tissue thickening. We've got some erosions. We were talking about before. That so stuff. What's the diagnosis here? So, given her history of eczema, um, she could have, uh, I guess, a seronegative um, arthropathy. Okay, so we've got other areas involved too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it could be one of the seronegatives, I guess, or. Um, yeah. So, you know, you certainly, if you just saw that first, if you mm -hmm. just saw these changes, uh, most likely this is just going to be due to uh, trauma in this area and you're going to have some uh, uh, post-traumatic changes, uh, maybe a little chronic instability with uh, hypertrophic healing phase. Uh, but mm -hmm. this patient uh, did not have a history of trauma and mm -hmm. ended up having multifocal disease, which puts it really into a different category here where you could have osteitis in multiple locations. And then there are a couple of syndromes that can come up. Uh, oh. and one is the seronegative, which you astutely brought up. Certainly, psoriatic arthritis can do this. And then uh, what's the SAFO syndrome? OK, well, it's um, sort of that uh, sequelae of uh, different uh, systemic, uh, symptoms as we, or symptoms as we um, have kind of outlined there on that slide. Yeah. and. Uh, so, so say for you can have a number, it, and it can be migratory at times, uh, uh, and you can also get what some people call migratory osteomyelitis, which you can have different joints around the body, which will become painful, and then over time you can develop a hyperostatic change in that location. Uh, they're kind of a whole group of poorly characterized diseases. Uh, which are probably primarily inflammatory and deal with uh, autoimmune syndromes. And one of the better known is the SAFO syndrome, where you get synovitis, acne, pustulosis, hyperostosis, and osteitis uh, in, in multiple locations uh, in, the, in the body. Uh, there have been theories that these could be due to a virus, but uh, which has not, not ever been uh, found to my knowledge, uh, but it probably has more to do with some sort of a uh, immune response. Yes. Say you had an older patient who had the same findings, would you take out the multifocal osteomyelitis at that point and just stick to these two? Or is it, you would include that in an adult population as well? Yeah, I would include it. But the multifocal uh, uh, osteomyelitis, again, it's a little bit unclear what, what that is whether it's due to actually trauma in young kids uh, or not. Uh, yeah. but, but I would go ahead and include that in the differential. Okay. Let's see, uh, Jeff, what do you think of this case? John? I was going to use a gut acne. Yeah. But, uh, I think this acne is related. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeff, what do you think of this case? Uh, 50 year old female, right side chest pain, no malignancy, no smoking, no trauma, frontal radiograph of the chest. Uh, 
uh, demonstrated here. Mm. So there's uh, on the right side of the chest, it looks like at the uh, proximal clavicle, at the articulation of the uh, sternum, and there's some increased density along the inferior aspect of the clavicle, uh, possibly sclerosis. Uh, chest CT axial image, uh, we see uh, this density is more clearly demarcated uh, kind of throughout the uh, medullary space of the proximal clavicle. And the cor uh, coronal image also demonstrated that as well. And then uh, on these uh, Tech 99 MDP images, uh, uh, on the frontal, I'm not really seeing an area of increased uptake. Or maybe. Very soon. Well, yeah, okay, there is. There is some increased uptake there as well. Uh, okay. Second case. Okay, companion case. Yeah. Um, companion case. So, it's like a, it's a stir image uh, demonstrating, it looks like in the left clavicle, a similar, it's like we have increased signal within the proximal clavicle increased as well. The low, low signal on the T1 weighted image. And here we can see the CT showing uh, there. Hmm. So, and then on these uh, condensing osteitis of the clavicle. So, certainly, uh, you know, on this images, uh, you know, with the increased sclerosis and the uh, increased uptake, I mean, it's certainly concerning for, uh, uh, you know, either some kind of uh, osteitis related to a traumatic process or infectious process. Um, yeah. And it's, and, um, it's, it's, there are only a few that are actually histologically proven in the literature, and, and you just get the thickening of the trabecular bone. Uh, my guess is that these are trauma. This is a common area for you get for trauma in kids. So I think these uh, uh, osteitis condensans, uh, uh, osteitis condensans of the clavicle, like I think it is in other areas, is actually uh, just a, a post-traumatic area. But that hasn't been proven. So there is minimal uptake on the bone scan. There's minimal uptake on the bone scan. Yep. But this is kind of a subacute to chronic stage when you see it, because it takes uh, weeks to months for you to get uh, the, uh, the density uh, develop on the, on the x-rays. So I, I think these are really trabecular bone injuries, but we don't have proof that that's correct. And that's just only clavicle that happens? Uh, it, it actually can happen elsewhere in the body, but, it's, but the, the, the medial aspect of the clavicle is a classic place for it. And they say they're always symptomatic, but then again, most people we, we don't really evaluate unless they have symptoms, so it's, it's hard to say. And there is a differential, but when it's painful, it's uh, and uh, they put in sclerotic mats here, which on the plane films, but uh, uh, typically it doesn't really look like mats on an MR examination. It certainly doesn't look like a sarcoma. And the treatment, most of the time they just get better on their own with, with, uh, with uh, just ten tincture of time. But people have been known to do medial clavicular resections in, uh, in rare cases. Dr. Yes. When it resolves, it does the uptake on the bone skin go away? I don't know. The, the, I don't I don't know the answer to that, but I think yes. So it's kind of like an osteoid osteoma. Well, I don't think it's an osteoid osteoma. On the MR, it doesn't look like an osteoma. Yeah, I, I mean, you can treat with NSAIDs. I'm not, I'm not convinced that NSAIDs do as much as people claim they do. Uh, I think it's just something that gradually gets better over time because it's probably post-traumatic. And as for, uh, NSAIDs are for pain. Yeah. I don't think they have much in terms of anti-inflammatory effect. Right. Although they claim it is. I know. Anyway, uh, the, uh, I would certainly not resect that clavicle. Yep. That to me is, uh, I, I, that's really, 
you may want to inject the area with some uh, steroid, the joint, uh, but uh, uh, certainly not resected. Uh, yep. But that makes things uh, uh, very complicated. Right. Let's see. Did Jeff do the last one? We had a 58-year-old female with sternal pain two weeks after being hit by an electric car at the SeaTac airport. Uh, we got a chrono, it looks like a PD fat sat and a sagittal, again, um, I'm guessing it's a T2, T1, okay. Uh, we have increased signal on the chrono image of the, in, kind of like, you know, sternum. And then on this uh, sagittal, it's kind of diffusely, Oh, actually, there's like, you know, linear decrease signal, which is probably edema given T1 and T2 signal characteristics. And then we have two other um, axial, uh, which looks like uh, it's a T1 on the left and T, I mean, PD fat side maybe on the right side, uh, which just shows increased signal within the medullary cavity of the uh, sternum. The cor cortex or borders are intact. Um, so I'm... What about some maybe like you know trabecular injury contusion? Yeah. Has it really been that long, John? Uh, oh wait a minute, that's not that long. I, I'm sorry. So, so this was this was two weeks after it. Actually, we did a follow-up study three months later because she was still symptomatic, and there was still edema in the sternum at three months, and she. Yeah, I I remember for about 10 months after the event. Oh, this was about eight years ago, wasn't it? It was. You're right, John. So this was uh, happened to my wife. And so that was, it took a long time for the pain to go away. A, 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 a patient of mine, I guess. Yes, a patient of yours. Right. And uh, you fortunately cons uh, treated it conservatively. <laughs> well, I'm glad, glad we didn't resect anything. <laughs> All right, a uh, 20 year old male with costochondral pain. And we have multiple coronal images, uh, T1 weighted images. Uh, so on the left, uh, beneath the clavicle, and or I suppose it's between the, the first and second ribs, there's some increased signal intensity. Is that a T1, Dr. Cruz? Are they all T1 weighted images? A marrow signal looks like T1. If it's bright signal intensity on T1, then it's human could be hematoma. Yes, um, I'm not sure. This could be T2s. I, I'm not sure what these are. Okay. Well, actually, that looks like fine fat. So they're all T1s. Um, oh, actually, no, I think. Oh, if you uh, if you see a D mount in bone, that 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 would be T2. Yeah. Okay. Must be something weird if it's from Brazil. Yeah. So between the between the second rib anteriorly and the uh, cartilage, there's uh, uh, edema within the distal distal rib. Uh, right. I guess that's the proximal rib anteriorly. Um, and so they have nonspecific pain. Um, so it could be costo, yeah, it could be costochondritis uh, uh, syndrome. And, uh, there's also a debate as to what causes this and so forth, and people talk about inflammation, but I'm, I'm really now quite convinced that this is post-traumatic. This is a traumatic injury, typically of the bone cartilage uh, junction uh, in these patients. I think it's overused. Yeah. It can be associated with positive markers, but uh, I think, uh, and it's typically overused. It doesn't have to be a discrete event. It just can be overused. I agree with John. Okay, so why don't, let's see, what time do we have here? Why don't we stop here, and we'll uh, talk about Little League shoulders starting uh, tomorrow, okay?
get back into some sports stuff. Any questions? Have a good one. Okay, thanks, John. Thanks, everybody.